Hey, what's up coin fam? In today's video, we're talking about a rare, one-of-a-kind transitional error. I'll give you some coin cleaning tips, tell you what to look for, and talk about the value of this rare coin. In 1977, clad quarters were struck at both the Philadelphia and the Denver Mints. Proof quarters were struck at the San Francisco Mint. An interesting fact is that this is the first year that the West Point Mint actually struck quarters as well. Don't get too excited though because these West Point minted quarters weren't struck with a W as a mint mark like some of the 2021 and 2022 quarters. They were struck with a P mint mark, so you'll never know if your 1977 quarter was really a West Point quarter or a Philadelphia quarter. There weren't supposed to be any 1977 silver quarters minted in this year, but somehow, maybe due to some mint mischief, there's at least one of them out there, and if there's one, there could be two. 1977 was a transitional year for quarters. In 1975 and 1976, bicentennial quarters were minted to commemorate the bicentennial of the American Revolution. That's why you won't find any 1975 quarters, and if you ever do, you're going to get paid. If you've been coin collecting long enough, you know about transitional coins. There's an increased possibility that an error coin can be produced, and when they're produced, they're usually worth pretty good money depending on its condition and population. In 1976, clad quarters were produced along with silver quarters. The silver quarters were circulation strike and proof strike. All of the silver quarters were minted at the San Francisco Mint on planchets comprised of 40% silver and 60% copper. Why is all this talk about the silver bicentennial quarter important? Because somehow, in the year 1977, when the mint wasn't supposed to be producing any silver quarters, at least one of them was produced and discovered, then auctioned off. This 40% silver quarter was struck at the Denver Mint. The theory is that the silver planchet was somehow stuck in a hopper and somehow made it over to the Denver Mint, where it may have been disengaged during the production of the 1977 clad quarter run in Denver. So how do you know if you have one of these silver quarters? There are a few things you're going to want to look for when you're trying to identify a silver quarter. One of the easiest ways to know if your quarter is silver is the sound it makes compared to clad quarters. You also want to check the edges. You may be fooled by quarters that have been plated or by a collector with too much time on his hands and a bad sense of humor that painted the edges to look like they're silver. The other thing you want to do is weigh your quarter. A 1977 quarter should weigh about 5.67 grams. A 1976 40% silver planchet comes in at about 5.75 grams. There's very little weight difference between these two planchets. A digital scale is a must-have for any coin collector. If you're in need of a digital scale, take a look at the links below for a couple inexpensive options. So we have a population of one 1977 Denver minted quarter on a 40% silver planchet. This quarter must be worth tens of thousands of dollars, right? Well, it should be, but this one isn't, and here's why. This one-of-a-kind transitional error sold at auction just a few years back for only $4,935 because it was improperly cleaned. It didn't even receive a number grade for this reason and was only graded XF. Whatever you do, don't clean your coins unless you know what you're doing. You can severely decrease the value of your coin. If you want to hear the difference between a silver quarter and a clad quarter and learn other ways you can find out if a quarter is silver, click on that video to the left.